Dr. Carolyn Hoxby is a professor of economics at Stanford University, a senior fellow of the Hoover Institution, and director of the Economics of Education program at the National Bureau of Economic Research. She is one of the nation's leading researchers on charter schools and uses a system of research and analysis that allows for fair comparisons with traditional public schools. Dr. Hoxby recently was in St. Louis to give a lecture at St. Louis University that was co-sponsored by the Show Me Institute. In her lecture, Dr. Hoxby presented evidence that charter schools in both Chicago and New York were outperforming their traditional public school peers. Prior to the lecture, Dr. Hoxby sat down with us and provided more insights into charter schools and how they stack up to traditional public schools. She also talked about the education choice movement in the United States and the obstacles it faces from a well-organized opposition. Well, I think there are several benefits of charter schools as an alternative to regular public schools. The first one is just that they provide an opportunity for students who are in failing regular public schools to leave and to go to schools that are potentially much more successful with them, that are going to improve their performance much more. So that's potentially benefit number one. Number two is that charter schools are really experimental. They are trying out education policies that the regular public schools often don't feel comfortable trying out. They're never trying out policies that are illegal for someone to do in the regular public schools, but they're just trying out things that are not being tried in the regular public schools. And the consequence of that is that we are learning much, much faster about which policies work from charter schools than we are from the regular public schools. If we tried to look only at regular public schools and learn from them, we would learn at a rate that I would guess would be 50 times or 100 times slower than we are learning from charter schools. So that's another benefit of charter schools. And then the third potential benefit of charter schools is just that they provide some competition for the regular public schools. And that often gives leverage to a superintendent or a chancellor of a big city school system or a school principal who wants to have his school, his regular public school, do the right thing and uh, needs to be able to say to his staff and his people, look, we have to do the right thing or we're not going to be able to hang on to our student population and our jobs. Um, so that's a third benefit. Well, charter schools um, pose a threat to the status quo in American education because they are independently managed, they do do things differently. For instance, they typically do not uh, buy into the common teachers union contract that is in place around them. And they will not pay a single salary schedule so that all the pay of all the teachers with the same seniority uh, and the same degree is exactly alike. Instead, charter schools will often pay teachers more who are in fields that are more in demand, or they'll pay teachers more who are better at uh, making kids uh, achieve. And so those are things that really threaten the, the status quo in regular public education. And therefore, they face a lot of essentially political um, obstacles. If I look at charter schools that are not succeeding in the United States, I would say that there are two reasons why they don't succeed. One is that there are always going to be some organizations that don't succeed, and they should shut down, just like there's some restaurants that open, and everyone thinks they're a great idea. But after a year and a half, people have decided that's not a perfect idea, and they don't get very much business, and they shut down. That's relatively rare. The charter, school is, charter schools are more likely to fail because they're actually struggling to survive in the political and public environment, whereby they often face a lot of scrutiny from the press. Um, they have less money to spend than regular public schools. Uh, sometimes they're fighting off teacher unionization efforts because they, d they really want to do something different than the regular public schools are doing. And they may be fighting an ongoing battle um, just for their survival with their state legislature. All of those things are, are reasons why it's tough to be a charter school, es especially in some states of the United States. It's, it's not the same everywhere. Well, one of the things that's hard for the public about charter schools is that the public does not realize that charter schools very disproportionately serve disadvantaged students in the United States. If we look at the overall 
student population of the United States, it is mostly white, it is mostly middle class, and people mostly live in the suburbs. If we look at the population of students who attend charter schools, it is mostly minority, in fact, mostly black, um, it is mostly inner city, and it is mostly poor. So you can't just look at your typical regular public school, compare it to the typical charter school, and expect them to have exactly the same performance. That's not really a fair comparison. I think often people get an impression of the charter schools by hearing their local newspaper report, the charter schools in this state do not perform at the same level as the average regular public school in the state. Well, that may be true, but the real question is, are the charter schools performing better with the sort of students they educate, who are not as advantaged as the average American student? And there, therefore, there is a perceptions problem that Americans will look at charter schools and say, maybe they're not performing as well as my local public school in my suburban neighborhood. It must be that they aren't good schools. And the person is not really adjusting for the fact that they're serving a very different uh, population of students. So I think they do face that sort of perceptions, perception challenge. But if you know much about charter schools, you will quickly overcome that sort of naive impression that just because they aren't doing what the average regular public school does, they're not doing a good job. Well, uh, first of all, I should say that successful charter schools outnumber the unsuccessful ones. Um, and part of the charter school model, the original idea of charter schools, was that there would be unsuccessful ones and they would either close or they would be reconstituted, sort of reset up by their authorizers. And their authorizers are a higher level of governance, a level of governance above their board of trustees. So right from the beginning, it was contemplated that not every charter school would succeed, and there were built-in mechanisms to try and make sure that charter schools that did not succeed were either transformed or exited. And most of them are transformed, not that many exit, really. It's 3% mm, or something like that exit in the United States, but quite a number are transformed at some point. Successful charter schools, I would say, move towards a model of educating the sort of students who they have a lot of, those are relatively poor students, minority students, inner city students. They don't all educate that type of students, but they move towards a model of educating the sort of student they have that works in practice. And they do not usually base their um, curriculum decisions or their disciplinary decisions on theories. They base them on what works. And I have seen many, many charter schools start off with one theory of what works, see whether it works, find out, hmm, this doesn't seem to be working, look around at some of the other charter schools that are succeeding and move towards their models of what works. I think they're very practical schools. So successful charter schools are usually those that, uh, that want to succeed, that have a good authorizer who will transform them if they need to be transformed, often by swapping the leader of the charter school, and that are practical about what works. They don't say to themselves, I can't pay teachers like this, or I can't assign teachers to classrooms like that. They decide that they'll do what works.